I am Eden Castile. It's a pleasure to see all of you. And I am here to talk to you today about online teaching and performing. What the tech? I like puns, can I say. I'm going to show you some ways that you can easily upgrade your online performing and your online teaching and learning, especially when it comes to music. So if you're singing musical theater or taking musical theater lessons or teaching musical theater, uh, directing musical theater, then you might be interested in this discussion. Uh, this is my home studio here in beautiful Wakefield, Rhode Island. I got my pianos, I got my mic, I got my in-ear monitors. Uh, but when I started uh, teaching on Zoom, I don't know, five or six years ago, I just talked into the screen like everybody else. It really fatigues you after a while. You probably noticed that too. So if you can get a microphone and some headphones, that's going to make it a lot easier on you uh, as you go through your Zoom day. But there are also better things than Zoom. So that's part of what we're going to talk about. I think what people are beginning to realize is that online performing is actually here to stay. It's not movies. It's not TV. It's its own kind of special uh, performance niche. It's going to create a new revenue stream for a lot of live venues that they're going to need. They're actually realizing it's a way to reach new audiences who wouldn't set foot inside their theater before the pandemic because the parking was too expensive or it just too long, took too long to get to the place. Uh, ticket price is too high. For whatever reason, they didn't show up by foot. They're showing up by clicking. I'm thinking of Seth Rudetsky, who has that wonderful Stars in the House series that he started almost in the beginning in March, right? He's given a lot of performers visibility and work that they wouldn't have otherwise. Uh, the Old Vic was mentioned in that article, and they have been showing some of their previous work as well. So when you can do that, and when it, you're permitted by copyright to do that, it's a great way to show people also what you've done before and to show them what your theater's brand is or what kind of things you do. So as things open up, that some percentage of your rehearsals and performing will happen online from now on, and it won't always be on Zoom. There's new technology coming in all the time. It gets better and better. So it won't be that you're all stuck in a grid practicing your Shakespeare. There will be some really wonderful hybrids of live performing and live recording and pre-recorded work. If you want to be in the producing field, the directing field, the creation field, the performing field, the more you know your tech, uh, the more opportunities you're going to have down the line. There are some common tech problems that are really easy to solve, but when you're tired or you're frustrated or it's the last day of the semester, you sometimes forget. Number one, do you have the current version of whatever program you are using? Uh, you need to check that. And uh, sometimes they don't tell you readily. Zoom doesn't. So delete the program and reinstall it. If you have an app on your phone, you got to delete and reinstall anyway to get the fresh version. Uh, but then just, you know, check your apps. Make sure that you have the most current version. Number two is you change the settings accidentally. This happens a lot if you're using mics and headphones. So you need to make sure that, you know, your settings are accurate. You go into your computer's audio section or you go into the application section. You make sure that you have the right settings chosen. Um, also in an update, sometimes they change what the settings do. Last thing is your computer's audio settings don't match the program settings. So you have a certain headphone and a certain microphone selected in your computer, but then you go to Zoom and Zoom doesn't realize that you're trying to connect through those two devices. And so all of a sudden no sound comes out. So you have to know where to find your audio settings in your computer and in every program you're using. And they're all slightly different. My advice is to take a screenshot when you get it right. So that way you can go back and find it later. Just do that. Every single one of these programs has a, usually a list of frequently asked questions at their websites. So read them. I have a bunch of them printed out on a bulletin board behind me so I can refer to them quickly. Make sure you get rid of outdated versions of your software, remove them regularly, or use a program to clean your computer, reinstall programs as needed, and restart your computer and device. If all else fails, turn the sucker off and turn it back on again. If you need help, reach out. You can go to uh, Discord, um, support programs on uh, what uh, Facebook, Reddit, anything. Anywhere there's social media, there's going to be a group with people who are doing the same thing you're doing. Now that we've gotten those common problems out of the way, time to make a list of your tech. This is a checklist. You should know exactly what tech you have and how it works. And if you haven't done this before, you know, take some time and, and do this and also ask your students to do it. First off, what kind of headphones do you have? Wired is always preferable over wireless because the, the connection is just better, but you can have both. 
Uh, what kind of way do you connect? Do you have Ethernet, which builds a really strong connection from your router to your computer or laptop? Or do you have Wi-Fi? If you can, switch to Ethernet. Even if you've got to drill a hole in the floor, it is so worth it. Then are you connected on Fios uh, or you have broadband? What kind of internet do you have? It varies all over the U.S. Um, what kind of microphone, if you have one? Are you using the microphone that's inside your computer? Do you have a Yeti that connects as a USB port? Or do you have a microphone that has a standard XLR connection like the kind that we see on stage? What kind of a microphone do you have? They do help because they do help reduce vocal fatigue and help isolate your sound. So if you can, that's good. Audio interface is a way of getting sound uh, from your microphone into your computer. Most common brands include PreSonus and Focusrite. I have a focus right and like it very much. It helps when I want to talk and it also helps if I'm recording online. So if you're doing audition videos or if you have to make a recording for a production that you're in, then an interface is something worth looking at. Again, Sweetwater and B&H are two great places to look for bundles of this recording equipment that's sold at a discount, but also check every local dealer you can find. And you can also check um, you know, online marketplaces. Um, they, Often people are upgrading their equipment and they're selling things off. What kind of modem and router do you have and how old is it? So if it's been about three or four years since you've upgraded uh, your modem and your router, you want to take a look at it because those do have advances. And again, it's all about making the fastest connection you can. What kind of computer are you using to connect? Is it a Windows or a Mac and how old is it? Many of these audio programs work fine on both, but they work differently. So some are really designed for Mac, some are really designed for Windows. So what kind of operating system? For many sound programs, if you have Windows, you do have to have an extra piece of software called ASIO, which helps Windows process sound. So just be aware of that. If you go through one of these programs and then it says, no, you're missing a piece of equipment, it's okay, it's a free download. Are you using a smartphone or a tablet? They're good for a lot of things, especially video. Audio, hmm. So something to be aware of. And then last is the fun stuff. You got a tripod? Do you have extra chargers for your tripod? Do you have extra cords for your tripod? And do you have one of those cool ring lights? Those are fun. Those are lots of fun. Um, playing around with lighting is just a really fun thing to do. And then after that, it's the really fun stuff like green screens. I have a green screen made out of a green tablecloth from the dollar store. Works great. Your first task is going to be to improve your audio. Now, if you're saying, well, I've gotten by so far. It's been a year and I'm getting by so far. I just use Zoom and I just play my ukulele and, and people give me money in my Venmo. No, no, they really don't like it. The problem with most audio in Zoom and elsewhere is that there's a little bit of a delay, right? We've all experienced it. The sound drops out if we sing loud or talk loud or we cannot collaborate in real time because it takes a minute for the sound to get to the person and then come back, comes back to us. That's called latency. All room, pretty close to your internal mic. Yeah. Okay, so if you go down to that little um, button, I'm sorry, the icon, uh, the mute icon with a little microphone, click the little arrow next to it, and then click audio settings. You should yep. see a whole bunch of settings. See those? Oh yes, a lot of them. So we want to, where it says automatically adjust microphone volume, make sure that's off. So that way we can hear you get loud and soft. And so Zoom doesn't do it for you. And then where it says suppress background noise, you can say auto or low. We don't really need to suppress it. And then where it says show in meeting option to enable original sound, we can try that. Some people get an echo when they do that, but some don't. So you can click that button for enable original sound. Yes. So when you click that button, then you'll see that it gives you an option. It gives you some more options. <clears throat> you can click with those the high fidelity music mode, right? Echo cancellation, stereo audio. And then do you see in the upper left hand corner of your zoom, it now says turn off original sound. At the, At top, the top you said? said? Yeah, top left. <clears throat> so when you click that button that says show in meeting option to enable original sound, then Zoom will have a little notice inside your Zoom room saying turn off original sound, which means it's on. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you got that. All right. Then in that little button it'll it, where it says turn off original sound, then you'll see a little drop down menu 
and it makes sure that it selects your internal microphone. Like I'm on my Scarlett, so it selects my, okay. But let's try to sing something at the same time and see what happens, okay? So if I sing a note and you try to join me on the note, let's see if we can hear each other. Uh, uh, right, so it cut out for me. Did it cut out for you? No. no. Okay, you sing first and then I'll sing. Did that it sounded great to me. Oh, okay, so you, we could hear each other pretty well? <laughs> Good. Let's see how much latency we have or how fast it's going. So I'm going to clap four times and then you clap on the next four. Okay, and we'll see how far apart we are. Right? So it sounded like it was in real time to you, right? Mm -hmm. All right. And to me, it was a little bit delayed. And we're actually fairly close together. So less than a mile, uh, less than 200 feet. So now you try. You clap four times and I'll join you for the last four. What if I told you there are options that can improve your latency and make it feel more like real-time performing? Would you like to explore those options? I would like to explore the options. This is your lucky day, generic college student. I am using a program called Clean Feed, which you can get at cleanfeed.net. There's a free version and there's a paid version. I'm going to see how much I can do today with the free version because most people would be on the free version. So I enter my name here, I enter my password because I've done this before. And then I am in the clean feed room. So I hit connect. I'm going to write down the name of this student. I can send him an email address if I want, or I can connect with him by just sending him a link, which is what so I'm, I'm going to do. Hit the advanced tab, connect on use. Instead of send by email, I'm going to share the link myself. I'm going to hit the invite button, and there's the link. I copy it to the clipboard. And then I come over to Zoom, I go into the chat, and I send you the link. So inside the Zoom chat, do you see that link? Yes. yes. All right, go ahead and pick that up. And then I come back to my clean feed room, and I should see you appear pretty soon. There's Paul, college student. All right, so now we mute ourselves in Zoom. Let's do another one. Let's do the clap test. All right, you clap four times, and I'll join you. Was that normal to you? Yeah, pretty much real time. Yeah. So, kind of cool, right? Yeah. Faster than Zoom. So, uh, what CleanFeed is really good for, for, for music, is this, right? That you can hear each other, the audio quality is better, and you often have a, some reduction in latency than you get with Zoom. So, what's really fun is when you try to actually play something for somebody, like... So, if you did that, la 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 all my troubles seem so far away. <laughs> I yesterday. Yeah, like that, right? So that felt like real time to you, right? Yeah. All right, good. And it was a little bit behind for me, but also wasn't terrible, right? So on songs that have more of a back phrase, it's fine. On songs where you have to be really on the beat, it's tougher. For instance, Happy Birthday, okay? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Paul. Yeah. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, there was a little bit of a delay, but you felt like we're... Okay, you've improved your Zoom, you've tested CleanFeed, 
but you wonder, what about these ultra low latency programs she keeps talking about? Okay, here we are. They all have great names that start with J or with S, or one is with an A. Jamkazam, Jamulus, Jacktrip, Soundjack, Sonobus, and Aloha. This technology has actually been around for 15 years or longer, but nobody really bothered to use it until a year ago. But now it's everywhere, and you're going to see it be used more and more over the next uh, interval of time. There are some technical requirements. You need to have an Ethernet connection from your router, which is often in the basement of your house, somewhere like that. Uh, you need to have that Ethernet cable from that router into your computer, and that's going to be a laptop or a desktop. There are Ethernet adapters where you can add it on to like an iPad or something like that, but basically you're trying to speed up the audio connection as fast as you can get it to go. So the first step is Ethernet. Next one is headphones. You need to have them be wired, wired into something. Either they plug into your computer or they uh, plug into your audio interface. But you want to avoid using wireless because, again, that will slow down the connection. A fast processor. So a computer with at least six cores. Quad core is not even minimum anymore, six cores. You can actually add a device now to computers called a fast music box. Costs about 150 bucks. And it basically processes all the audio for you. Uh, the other trade name is Raspberry Pi, P-I. So if you know somebody who's into computers and you say Raspberry Pi, their eyes will light up. But you can use that as a way of souping up a computer if you don't have enough computer power on what you got. And the last thing you have to do is port forward your router, which means that you uh, go into your router uh, through the computer number, which is like 198.1816.6, right? It's that kind of a number online. It's the IP address. And you basically are assigning your router to speed up a connection from your computer to one specific site. And it's one of these sites, Jamkazam, Jamulus, Jackchip, Soundjack, Sonobus, Aloha. It sounds harder than it actually is. If you're a gamer, you've already done this because it speeds up video game connections so that way you can play in what feels like real time. So musicians, we can do it too. If that sounds like a lot to you, you need to think about, do I really need to do this? You only need to do these things if you want to play or rehearse in real time. If you don't need to do that, you don't have to worry about this. But if that interests you the way it did me, then I'm about to show you a bunch of examples of how I collaborated with other musicians using Soundjack. I did this over the summer and the fall. I've actually gotten a lot better at it, but those were our first experiments. And I collaborated with people who were hundreds of miles away from me. That was what was so fun. Some of them I've never met before, but it was really fun to get to collaborate with them and to play for them and sing with them in real time. The sound quality varies. Sometimes you can hear pops and uh, crackles in it. That's because it's such a long distance. But the more you practice that skill, just like everything else, the better you get at it. So if you're a piano player or you play for students, then you may find this super useful. And if you're a pro musician or you know pro musicians, you should tell them about it. You really should. Uh, so my favorite ones are Soundjack, CleanFeed, and Sonobus. Soundjack is very uh, stable. CleanFeed we've already talked about. And Sonobus is brand new. It's in beta testing as of January right now. Uh, but then it'll be launching. And I've used it pretty successfully. It's somewhere between... Clean feed and Soundjack. So today I'm going to show you examples using Soundjack uh, that I've played with other people and then at the end is a classical song that I did with uh, players from New England Conservatory. So we were about 80 miles away from each other and uh, but we recorded it in real time. So I wanted you to see how I use it too. Named after my mother Oh man is another Child that's grown old Holy oh, yeah. shit. It has a little crackle to it, but is that the connection? Yes. Where I will need to the Ethernet cable. Right. Oh, my and God. You're in Nashville. That's insane. So. Uh, yeah. Oh, can't you see? You belong to me. My poor 
heart aches with every step you take every move you make every vow you break every smile you fake every claim you stake i'll be watching you every move you make every step you take I'll be watching you. <laughs> Not bad. Ta da! Okay, so, um, okay, let me press play. <laughs> the steps first you come over and you make sure that you have the application loaded so first you go to soundjack you register and then you download the application right here it looks like a little xlr cable and you know it's active because you see that up there then you come over and you open a browser i'm using a vivaldi browser and i'm going to soundjack.eu stage right here stage so you can see there i am i'm all nice and registered there's the nice word stage and this is where you do most of your work and then I have all of these settings in a particular way. So I'm in my own private group now, Eden Super Fun Singing Group, but I could also be public. And this is like talking to anybody. You may have to do some extra steps to get set up, but this is what it looks like when you are. This is telling me that I'm active. And then if I want to connect with somebody, I go over here to these little lines right here. If I want to connect with my own, I go to this and connect to the test. So right now my latency is 10 milliseconds. That's really fast. It would be even more impressive if it wasn't my own machine. So, uh, but that's pretty good. And that's how much, that's how fast it goes when it's going through the microphone and my audio interface and then bouncing up and bouncing back down again, which is pretty good. We'd expect that. So then if I want to send my signal to Virginia, there, that's 24, right? So that's how much it takes for, to bounce the signal down. You can hear I have a tiny bit more of an echo now. So if I want to send it to Nuremberg, Okay, okay, that's, that's 117, 117 right? right? But that's, but that's sending to Germany, to Germany. So, so that's, that's why. why. But, that but that shows you the latency, the latency right? right? So, so that's, that's 117. 117. That would be totally unacceptable for music. music. Uh, uh, but but isn't, isn't it cool, cool that, that I can connect? connect? I, could I could do a, do a bunch, bunch of things, things to, try to, things to try to bring that down closer to 40 or 30, which is what you'd want for real time. I could change some of my router settings. I can change some of these buffer settings right here. But, you know, to Nuremberg is going to be a bit of a journey. So that's how I set up for Soundjack. Then for my video, I'm using Jitsi right now. I'm not actually in the Jitsi meeting, but this is what it looks like. It looks like, it's like Zoom, doesn't it? So, but Jitsi Meet is a free service. I can add other people to the meeting and I can also record. I'm using QuickTime to record my entire screen here, but I can also record just Jitsi if I like. So what I would do, if I was using Soundjack as my audio, I would turn off Jitsi as my audio here. Otherwise you're gonna hear an echo. 
So then I basically am making a movie, right? And so I've got my video coming through one way and then Soundjack is doing my audio and it's nice and fast. So I get to see somebody and play for them and then I get to have the audio go by really quickly. But what do I want to do if I want to record all this stuff? For video, I can use QuickTime or I can set up a camera and record you know, from an angle, something like that. Uh, but if I want to record the audio, I'm going to use Audio Hijack, which is a, uh, something by Rogue Amoeba for Macs. And uh, there is a Windows equivalent. Uh, but what you can see here, basically, it gives me a workflow where it picks up every bit of sound coming out of devices that interface with my computer. So I have my application sound jack. I've got my Scarlett interface from my own microphone, any kind of sound coming through the computer. And then it's output back to my Scarlett, and then I pick up that sound with a recording. And that's how I can test. So I'll, I'll always do this at the beginning of a sound jack session. I'll record a little bit like this. And then I'll go and check and see if it's active with a recording. And that's how I can test. So I'll, I'll always do this at the beginning of a sound jack session. I'll record a little bit like that's good, isn't it? So uh, what's really great is it's, it's really fast, too. So you can test Audio Hijack uh, before you buy. And Jitsi is free and Soundjack is free. Not bad. This is the bomb. 
Here's how you can use that improved online audio. Of course, in lessons, teachers, you can use Zoom as your video connector, and then you can switch your audio to one of these other programs. Many of them will also record within the program, and the recordings will be better. You can have it so that way you are teaching a student who is in another city, and your piano player is in another city still, and the three of you can hear each other in as close to real time as possible. You can also do it where you are all in the same building, and you are down the hall from each other. You just can't be in the same room, but you can still use the technology that way, and it will allow you to have a safely distanced rehearsal, but you will feel like you're in real time. This improved online audio is also good for master classes, workshops, recitals, concerts. I know of some college students who have done voice recitals where the pianist was in one room and the singer was down the hall and they did a recital and the teacher was kind of the broadcast producer and bounced the show out to all the viewers. You can also make it like radio. You can do interviews and podcasts and anything that you could do uh, before the pandemic with this audio works really well now. You can do small group coaching, and by small, I would say like three to five people where there's one person who's kind of coaching and the rest are observing. The more people that get onto these connections, the slower it goes for everybody. But all of these programs, especially the ultra low latency ones, are increasing the amount of people who can participate. They're doing that regularly. You can teach and rehearse small ensembles as well. Uh, Jack Trip especially is designing itself to be used by choirs. And last fall, they did a choir experiment with like 40 or 50 kids uh, singing together in real time. And they each had a little device at their house so that way they could hear each other. And then they used Zoom to actually see the conductor. So that was the test. But over the course of 2021, that's going to become the reality. You can rehearse singer instrumentalist pairs. I think this is where this ultra low latency is really going to be important. So I've already done this many, many times where I'm playing for a singer uh, or I'm working right now in a cabaret with my piano player and I'm playing as well. So it's two pianos and two singers and we're using Soundjack. He's about, what, 50 miles away, 40 miles away and it works really well. You can also just make music together for fun. You don't have to do it for educational purposes at all. You can just jam together. And there are some programs that are actually designed uh, kind of as social situations where you can go find people that you never met in your life and you go into an, a room and you jam together. Sometimes you can see them, sometimes you can only hear them. It's really a wonderful, wild experience. And then last but not least, another way to use the improved audio is to actually perform online. You perform in your place, and your collaborator is in a different place, and then your sound is coming out together. I've done this successfully a couple of times with a jazz singer friend of mine who lives 889 miles away. It was really fun. Now that I've got your hearts all afire about all of this ultra low latency tech and low latency tech and what it can do for you, I want to remind you about something. This is not plug and play. None of it is. You will have to uh, do a lot of experimenting to make sure that you get the right software for you and that you're using it to the best of its ability and the best of your tech. I first started connecting on Soundjack last April because I read about it online and I tried again in May and I kept failing. And I thought, what is this program? It's probably not that good, it's not for me. And then I finally saw somebody demo it successfully online and I decided I wanted to try again, but it was really hard for me to find somebody to test it with. I finally found the jazz singer in North Carolina who was willing to test it with me, uh, but I still didn't have a lot of success. So I had to do a bunch of those little steps. I had to upgrade my router. I had to try to port forward it and I wasn't successful for months and months and months. And instead I actually threw everybody in my house off of the internet. I had to get an ethernet cable so that way I could build my own connection. So we had to drill a hole in the floor of the studio because the basement's directly below us. And then I had to get a new computer because my other one was about nine years old and it just couldn't handle the processing speed. I am still working on building my connection speed and getting it as fast as I can possibly go. And I'm still trying new tech as it rolls out. 
Remember, what you absolutely have to have is you need to have an Ethernet connection, you need to have wired headphones, you need to have a decent router and a decent processing speed of your computer. Having a microphone is helpful. Some, for some people, Google Hangouts is much better quality and much better connection. For some people, Facebook Live or Facebook Messenger is a lot better. That's great. Use the highest quality video you possibly can. A couple of other ones you might want to check out include Jitsi Meet, which operates similar to Zoom, but I find it's a little bit easier to get people onto Jitsi. I can get my 78-year-old dad onto Jitsi, but he has a really hard time with Zoom. So if you have students or people in your life who get really overwhelmed with all of the passwords and the signing up and things like that, they might enjoy Jitsi. LiveLab.app is another one, but it's only for Chrome browsers, no other kind of browser at all. It's built by performers, for performers, especially for artists. Uh, the video quality is okay. It depends on how good your camera is, really, inside your desktop or inside your Android. But it's very easy to join. It does not have the ability to record. So if you want to record the session, you have to either just do a screen recording or record in some other way. The advantage of using a program, a video program other than Zoom is that these other ones don't use as much processing speed in your computer. So if you are running a high level sound program, you may want to have a lower level video program. So that way uh, you can record both. So I do this routinely. I'll put on Soundjack and then I'll switch to Jitsi Meet for my video. So that way my computer doesn't get overwhelmed with how much work it has to do. I find that. I want to mention a few other really fun online tech options that may be useful to you as creators and performers. Soundtrap, BandLab, and Audio Movers. These are basically digital audio workstations called DAWs. They are what musicians use when they're building tracks, right? So they let you input information, either you play piano and the sound is going in, or you're playing MIDI, which is Musical Instrument Digital Interface, and you're making digital uh, data go in, translate it as sound. You're singing into a mic and the sound is going in. And you can see all of them as tracks going by on a piece of software. Normally, uh, to do all of that, you have to download that stuff to a really powerful home computer or a home laptop, programs like Logic Pro and uh, Studio One, things like that. What's great about them is that you can collaborate from wherever you are. So you can have five-part harmony and the five singers are coming from <laughs> Key West and Seattle and New York and Texas, but each one can add their part and can see everybody else's vocal as well. So my friend Wendy Jones actually made a video about using Soundtrap that is set to the tune Twisted, which is a great, great jazz song. So you're gonna see my friend Wendy be super creative, but you're also gonna see how she used Soundtrap in her home studio and in her studio at Western Carolina University. told me that I was right out of my head. They said I was crazy and that I had been misled to think that we could ever sing in sync. I knew all along they were all wrong and I knew that they thought I was crazy but I'm not. Oh no. Because I found Soundtrap and then I was filled with desire to try out this program. Since I found out I was required to teach my jazz ensemble all online Then I was convinced it would be fine and I knew what to do I would see this project through, oh yeah The plans I compiled, they appeared a little bit wild with all this crazy new tech But I knew it was happening, I knew this was so genius it's so strange when you know that you'll be all on your own My mind was just a wee bit blown Well I set up the tracks and got the input just right Told them to count and keep the rhythms real tight We tried to stay calm and we made lots of mistakes And I drove them crazy wanting more than three takes Now do you think I was crazy? They may have been only five but they were swinging they all laughed at Mr. Grimbell. They all laughed at Edison and also at Einstein. 
So why should I feel sorry if they just couldn't understand the reasoning and the logic that went on in my head? I had a brain, it was insane, teachers used to laugh at me when I preferred to disagree that students couldn't prove and jive because their class would just be hell online. And then I exported their tracks The engineer told me That he would send them back With music and video synced in time The kids were gonna have A concert online And next all alone I would stream the show from home Oh yeah The faculty told me That I was right out of my head But I said your teachers I think it's you instead Cause I have got a thing that's cool and neat Online learning can be quite a treat And I'm over the moon I'm gonna swoon And I think I deserve a great big old raise This is fun. I was thinking about what's going to happen in the future with all this tech. Like I said before, I think that all of this is going to continue to be used even after our national emergency because it really helps us do what we need to do. So I threw out a bunch of things that I think are gonna happen. We'll see if they come true or not. You won't have to go to specialty stores to get this kind of um, audio equipment, especially to go at high connectivity. The connectivity is gonna get better and better. So distance will be a diminishing factor in where you work and how you perform and how you learn. You're already seeing that happen. I think it's just gonna continue to pick up. Your performing life will have some in-person roles online at other times. Like I said, it's not quite like a movie. It's something in between. Summer stock can be year-round. Uh, live streaming, you will have to upgrade your production level. So just like uh, before we were willing to accept, um, you know, having to, to do, um, you know, grainy videos and things like that. And now it's all high def and everything. Live streaming is going to get better and better production values. But you can do it. And the equipment that you need is going to be cheaper and more available, and you're going to know how to run it. You will do many shows where you never meet half of the people because everybody's remote. You will do virtual choir videos just like you've been doing, but you're going to do them all live because the technology will be there. You will be taking audio and editing, video editing classes as part of your performance degree. Or if you don't have them within your degree program or they're not offered, you're going to have to take them after you graduate. You will learn music theory skills uh, by learning them by arranging music through an online DAW. You'll choose to buy tickets for either the live version or the virtual. And if you go to the virtual, you'll feel like you're sitting in the theater. There'll be a camera in the chair or some equivalent of that. That's coming. And the prices will be fairly similar. And finally, this is what I hope is happening, it's beginning to happen, that copyright laws are becoming to be updated so that way you can actually get paid and compensated fairly for all of this stuff you're creating online. So check back in 10 years, let's see. I have thrown a lot of information at you today. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. I do not expect you to remember everything I said. So I hope that you'll go back and review this again. I have information about all of these programs on my website, which is EdenCastile.com. And if you're really interested in learning more about this tech, I have a couple of offers for you. This is applies whether you're a performer or a student or a faculty. You can book an online tech setup session with me that lasts for 45 minutes where I will help you do an audit of your current tech and do that checklist. And I'll help you figure out how to use some of these programs and try them out, depending on which ones are right for you and your students. So you can book that through EdenCastell.com. If you've already set up one of these programs and you just want to jam with me, you can book that time for free. Half an hour, we'll play whatever you want that I can play. But you can do both of those through EdenCastell.com and I hope you'll take advantage of it. Thank you so much for all of your wonderful hard work and artistry this past year and also in the years before. I love being part of the KCACTF uh, Region 1 family and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your session. We know from that's a nationwide, from state to commonwealth, we can't sing close together without risking our health. 
In every music department in the north and in the south, you mustn't make a sound unless the sound stays in your mouth. You simply mustn't gamble. Your safety must come first. But there are so many problems with music class online. Or am I cursed? Nope. In fact, we're very close to a cure. Cure? Cure what? Cure what you can today. Anxious though you may be, the future is here to stay. And that's not hyperbole. Cure what you can today. Rather than sigh and sorrow, cure what you can today and cure the rest tomorrow. <laughs> cure what you can today. Cure what you can today. That's why you wear a That's mask. That's why you wear a mask. Opera Jazz Cabaret. Opera Jazz Cabaret. You're equal to the Hope task. there's no sequel though. Cure, cure what you can today. today. Ask someone else to show you. Cure what you can today. So new or tech won't throw you. Technology supports and grows your studio. Dependable, reliable, and fast. Zoom and Jitsi. Ian Howell. Nats does sound jack. Jitter. Sound trap. Jam kazam. But cure what you can today. Handle it meek and gently. Cure what you can today and learn the rest. Sequentially. See how I did that there? That's a great word. Soon you'll wonder why it frightened you so long. But if you cry, it's all too hard to do. Get a symptom. Get a fever. Get a swab test. Get two, six, nine. Duh. Duh. Cure what you can today. Rather than sigh and sorrow. Cure what you can today so you can play. And sing and play. And sing and play. And sing and play the, the safest, safest way. way. Tomorrow.